Hello, Robert MacDonald here. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Telegram, Gab, BitChute, Rumble, YouTube. All the links are in the description, including a link to give, send, and go for my wife's medical costs. Thank you. So, on Twitter recently, I had an interesting exchange that I thought highlighted an issue I've touched upon in different ways, but really haven't delved into, and that is about touch. <clears throat> and while I have talked a lot about intimacy and physical touch in the context of marriage, romance, and sex, that's kind of a given. We, all, we pretty much all accept that's a reality and that's okay. But what this gets into is all the other numerous levels and types of touch and intimacy that exist outside of any kind of romantic or sexual relationship. So this woman said, why are you as a man greeting me with a shake of the hand? A simple smile, head nod, and it's a pleasure, madam, will suffice. Please don't touch me. Now the first part is a legitimate point. Because shaking hands is traditionally a man-to-man -man greeting. And I, I'm okay with that because there are certain subtle undercurrents in the handshake that are very explicitly male. There is that sense of assessment of the other man in a competitive sense, in a awareness of um, powess and violence and challenge. Now, it doesn't mean it's there in every handshake because if there's a, already an established relationship and a recognition of res mutual respect, then that's it's not so much. But that is a reality of the ritual of a handshake. And that's why it's traditionally been a man-to-man -man greeting. It's not that it's explicitly wrong for a man to shake a woman's hand, but it's not the highest ideal of etiquette and manners. Rather, as I said, don't touch me, what's wrong? Yeah, shaking a woman's hand isn't traditional. Instead, a man was supposed to take her hand and bow over it or even kiss it. And another woman... And another woman responded... Well, not actually kiss the hand, but bow deeply over it and perhaps touch it with the lips. Now, that is correct. She, I, was, I was being a little bit uh, flippant in my response, and her nuance is correct as far as etiquette and manners. And I think it makes a good point. And also illustrates the fact that there should be multiple layers in our physical interaction with other humans. So we're, we're talking about a handshake, man-to-man, -man, still technically space for a man-to-woman shaking hand, just not the highest ideal. Then you have the taking of the hand of a woman, bowing over it, touching with lip. And then, of course, the kiss is you're starting to cross over into the romantic element. Nothing wrong, but what we see is the nuance and layers of interaction. And then this other guy got in on here, and he's like, Yeah, maybe 150 years ago. Ho <laughs> ho, LOL. And then I said, Well, I've done it. And then he's like, Cringe. Why is that cringe? Why are we shying away from physical touch? And it's not the first time I've seen this. Um, there is a discussion over a video that's been going around of this guy whose 26-year marriage at Indian, and he was just broken, obviously very broken. And you can debate whether that should be something shared on social media, but we don't know his circumstances. We don't know if he actually had anyone else to reach out to. So maybe this was an act of desperation. I would much rather someone post what 
ends up being an embarrassing social media post than to delete themselves. I would much rather have that. I would much rather they live to be embarrassed than to do that. And, you know, we can debate about his display of emotion, which was getting ridiculed, which is, is wrong. And I get into that subject of, um, I think I titled it something like, Real Men Don't Cry, question mark. And I'll put that in the description. Because that's not what I'm getting into. But one of the guys was commenting on there and went back and forth with me trying to advocate for this cardboard, stereotypical Hollywood machoism that's very shallow and isn't realistic. And, and when it went on to call David and Jonathan's friendship gay. So what you see here is two kind of extremes in that this second guy had no conception of male-to-male contact or just physical contact in general without it being sexual. And that's the problem here. We are, we are trying to um, frame all physical contact as being romantic or sexual. We've lo- we're losing any conception of normal, everyday, platonic, or familiar physical contact, which for most of human existence is very normal. I mean, we're literally born through physical contact and we're in our mother constantly in contact with her and then post-birth you're held and nursed and cuddled etc and you can't even imagine as a child not having that physical contact for years and i've talked a lot about how atomized we are and this is part of that the younger generation especially zoomers and younger are not having the same amount of physical contact. And we can see this manifested in in how little sex they're having. Because if you're not able to engage in social contact or physical touch in other ways, how are you going to get to the point of the romantic or sexual except out of desperation? which of course is a very unhealthy pattern. It leaves you more vulnerable because you're not going to do anything until you're desperate, which also leaves you more open to be preyed upon and abused. Of course, the knee-jerk reaction is to just blame this on screens. And screens are a major factor, but they are much more of a symptom than a cause. They are what we are grasping hold of to replace what was there rather than actually causing the absence in the first place. And I've talked repeatedly about the impact of our social networks breaking down because of things like the Industrial Revolution. And that's a very long process. I've talked about that in other videos. But also we have to think about things like the sexual revolution that divorced sex from relationship through a whole many different things like the pill and abortion etc and by doing that you disengage those social connections because there's a whole bunch of different aspects that come into that between the two people as a couple between families community etc all that is broken down when we start slicing up who we are and divorcing it from its various connections. Because nothing about us is in isolation. We are social creatures. We need other people. We need human touch to be healthy, normal, and thrive. And we can see this increasingly being a problem. You think about teachers can't touch kids anymore. You know, there's, there's a variety of reasons. There's changes in how we administer discipline in schools. There's the concern over sexual abuse. And so we're isolating ourselves even more. There was the lockdowns where everyone was afraid to be 
in contact with each other, which is a disease, even though we've been living together as a species for thousands of years that didn't suddenly become unhealthy. But we've had these increasing number of different things that have made us afraid or unsure about having physical contact with each other. And I see this a lot with when I'm talking to guys. They're afraid of being accused of abuse or of sexual assault, which is in part from the sexual revolution. It is in part feminism. It is in part atomization that we are forgetting how to interact with each other as humans, as coworkers, as random people on the street, as friends, as acquaintances, etc. Another major cause is parenting. You know, like just in just between me and my other siblings, there is a some contrast between us older kids who had much more interaction with their parents because they're younger, they had more time, they're less stressed. My dad would wrestle around with us boys more, versus my youngest brother is not as comfortable with physical touch as us older ones were because my parents were older, they were more busy, they were more stressed, more, more financial strain. And these factors have only gotten worse with the younger generations. You know, my parents are at the tail end of the boomer generation and it's only gotten worse each year, each successive parenting generation because of economic restraints longer school days, longer commute times. This all decreases physical contact within the family. Then these people grow up understanding those, the social norms of physical contact less and less. And so it's really important that we work at this because otherwise we're going to become more and more atomized and unsure and you're going to have more and more examples of people breaking down and acting out in desperation. Now, some things are placating this, like screens, like pornography, like OnlyFans, video games, etc. They're, they're like an artificial fill-in. And we'll increase that with virtual reality and AI tech going forward. But it's it leaves people isolated and unsure and open to predation more so. So we, as often as the true, when you act in fear, you are often setting yourself up for worse in the future. And it's going to be hard because you're going to have to be brave and awkward and being the person reaching out, literally reaching out to touch the other person, whether it's a handshake of whatever of whatever sort of greeting between men or women or vice versa, whether it's um, fist bumps, whether it's putting an encouraging or sympathetic or um, caring hand on the shoulder or around the shoulders. Or just different little acts of affection, of respect, of caring. You know, you think about what we see women would do. Little little touches, you know, the touch on the forearm. Because you matter. It didn't necessarily have to be romantic. The peck on the cheek because you did something good that she really appreciates in a deep sense. And we forget that there can be these kinds of interactions without it being romantic or sexual. And it's going to take a, a purposeful, intentful effort to bridge this gap. And it's going to take awkward moments and you're going to be embarrassed. But we have got to push back against this idea of bubble wrapping ourselves against all possible harm or risk. We can't live that way. We can survive, but we can't thrive. We need each other. We need to touch 
we need to have contact with other humans. It's not easy. It's something I have to think about sometimes in my own self. But it is worth it to have healthier relationships of numerous types. Carry on.